Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. After the amazing response to the part one of Portugal last week, we're so excited to bring you part two. It was a very special project, there were so many amazing details. We wanted to bring it out in two videos so we could talk about all behind the design and give you a real insight into this amazing property. I hope you enjoy it. I absolutely love this room. It's bathed in natural light, as you can see. We wanted to go for a neutral scheme, but add some pops of color. And I think this is such a good example of how a little bit of color can go a long way. The starting point for the color scheme in here was this fabric here. The client absolutely loved it, and it combines two colors, both of which are quite strong. So it's got a sort of dark teal and then a light turquoise and we decided to bring those colours out the cushion and emphasise that by using the two different colours on the throws and the beds. So we've got the lighter turquoise and the darker teal here. And then the artwork again brings out some of those similar tones. And these beautiful lights, I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous. We really wanted to emphasise the feeling of being by the beach where you've got the sea with all those different colours of blue and green. And this looks just like water to me. I absolutely love it. It looks so beautiful with all the light coming through. I think your outfit works really well in this room as well, so. Oh, thank you. That's not a coincidence. I'm not going to lie. So when I was packing for this trip at like 11 o'clock at night, I actually went through all the presentation of the room schemes when we were presenting to the client, what the colours were, the fabrics. And I just thought, you know what, I need to show that I'm on a hot country, so I'm wearing all white. <laughs> thank you for noticing, Ollie. <laughs> yeah, um, we've got some different Addison Ross frames. I don't just plug my own collection. Um, and some lovely faux flowers. These are like a faux sage, and these are from Wildwood, so I'll link them in the description. Um, in terms of dressing the bedside table, it's always nice to have a photo frame and a really small faux plant. These bedside tables are extra wide because this is quite a wide room. We decided to go 80 centimetres wide on the bedside, and it allows you a lot more space to play with. So on a normal bedside table, this might be too many accessories, um, but here it works perfectly. For the walls, we've gone for another tonal, neutral wallpaper. This is another vinyl, um, and it looks like linen. It's quite similar to the one that we have in the basement. And then for the headboard, we've gone for a boucle fabric, which is really hard wearing and practical. You want to make sure your, bed, your headboard fabric is very practical, doesn't stain easily or mark easily. And for making the bed, this is our favorite way of making the bed. I love a folded back duvet with a thin bedspread and then your pillow's lying down horizontally with some cushions scattered in the middle. It looks a lot more relaxed and a lot more sort of current than having it completely covered in a big bedspread and too many cushions, you just want a few. All the furniture in this project is custom, including these bedside tables, which is why we were able to go so wide. And I love the fluted detail on the front and all the drawers are push, catch, release, so you don't have to have any handles. We've done these in an oak veneer with a very sort of light off-white stain, so they feel really light and beachy. And for the rug, we decided to go for a very thin rug because this is a beach property and they might come back with sand. We want to make sure there's no deep pile rugs here. So this is a really nice thin rug, um, but adds some softness into the room. Right now we're in the daughter's bedroom. The biggest transformation in this space was of course this amazing wallpaper, which looks just like the sunset that you can see out the window behind me in the evenings. Hopefully if we manage to stay here long enough before we catch our flight home tonight, we'll be able to show you how that transitions from the wallpaper into the sunset. Over here we've got the headboard wall and we always like to do something fun with the headboard, especially in a kid's bedroom. So here we've just taken these sun hats that we bought online, they weren't expensive at all, and arranged them artfully in a cluster so they become an artwork. And I love this because it's something different, it's something playful and unexpected, but somehow very appropriate for a beach property. The color from these ties into the warmer tones that we have on the leopard print cushions. We wanted to introduce a slightly warmer color because this wallpaper, as much as we love it, is much cooler tones. And in all the rooms that we do, we like to make sure they still feel nice and warm and inviting. The headboard is upholstered in this amazing linen fabric. I wish you could feel this, it feels so soft. 
and it almost has like a waxed finish to it. Again, very hard wearing and stain resistant. And then we've carried that pink down onto the bedspread. Now this bedroom, when we first started designing this room, I think the daughter was about nine or 10. And with all the kids' bedrooms that we design, we always try and make sure that they can transition and grow with the child. But now she's 12 and she's on the cusp of becoming a teenager. And this is what's so great about when you design a bedroom that will grow with the child, you don't need to change it. It's still perfectly suitable for a teenager. Um, and I think she's gonna love it. Like she hasn't seen it yet, but there's little elements that her mum's been sharing with her. And I'm really hoping that she's gonna love it because for me, it would be my dream bedroom as a teenage girl. I feel like future proofing is one of those things that's almost overlooked sometimes. Definitely, and like I get a lot of feedback slash criticism um, from followers on Instagram or like whichever platform telling me, oh, but this doesn't look like a child's bedroom. Well, you know, I made that mistake before I became a mum where I would create these amazing nurseries that were like the perfect nursery, really cute wallpaper, really cute artwork, very whimsical. But then by the time the child's three, it no longer feels appropriate. And by the time the child's going to school, they want you to redecorate. And that is just a complete waste of time and money. So now I've learned through that. I've learned by becoming a mother, how quickly kids grow up. And I make sure that the room is ready for them, you know, the long term of their life. They should be able to stay in that bedroom the whole way through. You just change the artwork. Like with these hats, for example, we were um, discussing with the client if her daughter grows out of these sun hats, what could we replace them with? And we've already got ideas about how we could replace them with maybe some ceramic art, some of the master bedroom, or maybe some like large decorative shells, probably fake shells because you wouldn't be able to get one big enough. But there's lots of different things you can do. But the base of what you create has to be adaptable. This works equally well as a pre-teens bedroom, but it could also transition into a guest bedroom. So we're always thinking about those kind of things. For the bedside tables, I love this. Now come and have a look at these, Ollie. These handles are so cute. And again, it's picking out those little details from the artwork. The handles are a beautiful rattan handle. Works so well with the woven texture of the hat. And then we've done them on a stained oak table. The client wants to make sure that all the tables have a solid plinth. When you're a designer and you're designing people's projects, you need to make sure that you understand all their little requests and nuances of what they want and each project we do is catered very much to the client. Um, so in here and in all the bedrooms, you'll notice all the furniture that's solid goes all the way down to the floor. We purposely went for a really big oversized lamp because all the artworks kept just to above the headboard. We needed a tall lamp that was gonna fill the space next to the headboard. These ones are so beautiful. I love the glass and particularly how it goes from the dusty pink all the way to the white and an ombre effect. And when you look up close, it's got this amazing pattern with all the bubbles and the glass as well. They're all handmade in the UK. And then in terms of dressing, we've just kept it quite simple with a little book with a touch of pink on it and a little pink pot with a succulent. Opposite the bed, we have this huge built-in desk that we've designed. It's 1.8 meters long, it's absolutely enormous. And the brief here from the client was that she wants to add even more storage. So we've got chest of drawers here for her daughter's clothes. And this section is obviously a desk. It can also be used as a dressing table with a mirror, but we've done some cable management, so if she wants to change it into a desk and put a computer, she's got plenty of space to do that too. Then for the desk chair, this is probably my favorite piece of furniture in here. I absolutely love this fabric. We've continued the leopard print that we had on the bed onto the back and front of the chair back. And then for the seat pad, we have done this gorgeous velvet. It's a hard wearing velvet, so it's not gonna mark. Um, and I just think it's the perfect finishing touch. It's got a real mid-century vibe. I think she's gonna love it. So they each have their own little terrace area. For outside the daughter's bedroom, we've done this swing chair. How fun is this? So it really works nicely with the interiors inside the bedroom. And it's a lovely spot for her to just sit and relax. The huge sliding doors in the primary bedroom open up to this terrace area where it's been dressed with these gorgeous chairs. I love this woven texture on the arms. It looks good all year round, even when it's not dressed with all the cushions. Just the form of these chairs by themselves are perfect. But we've added a couple of cushions, bringing the colors from the inside to the outside and added a little table and some succulents. So it's the perfect place to sit and relax.
We're in the open plan living room, dining room and kitchen in the apartment. The first thing that we did was really want to separate this space from the entrance hall. There's a straight run all the way from the front door where you can see through to the back terrace. And whilst that's really nice that you get to see the outside as you're walking through the front door, we wanted to create a sense of privacy and separation. We designed and installed these screens with the reader glass and the bronze frame. And they're slightly staggered because we want to still make sure that people can circulate in and out the space well. But when you're standing back here, what that does is slightly obscure the view from the front door so it slowly reveals itself. As we walk in, the first area that you really notice is the living room. And all the palette here is very earthy, very organic. We went for lots of round, natural shapes. So if we start with the sofa, we looked at lots of different layouts when we were designing this space. We looked at perhaps putting the sofa where the armchairs are, vice versa. We didn't want to block the view or the light coming in, but this naturally felt like the right place for the sofa. We didn't want to make people have to walk around it and block the space off too much. It's upholstered in a beautiful boucle fabric, and then we've just done some really simple cushions in three different fabrics and textures. I love this one with a metallic, it's almost like a metallic weave. And then we have this herringbone with a um, plaid leather trim. The details in here are so refined, it's very subtle. And I love that about this interior, that what looks initially very simple, the more you sort of analyze it and the more you look at it, you really realize how much detail and luxury there is here. Next to the sofa, we've got another little sofa table, which I love. It's got a lovely oak top and a bronze base and it's from the same supplier as this coffee table. We did this in a custom finish, we wanted to go much lighter and I love the combination of the dark bronze against the light oak. We've dressed it with some beautiful objects such as this faux succulent from Wild Wood. This amazing plate which was our clients was just perfect for the space, I love how it's got that ombre effect. On this wall, we wanted to really upgrade the finishes. So originally there was this chimney breast and it was just painted. We had the fireplace, but there was nothing really at the base. So we've designed this piece of joinery, which is actually entirely clad in stone. So the drawer fronts are stone, the top is stone, and I love how that contrasts against the wooden floor. On the central chimney breast, we decided to do a contrasting wall finish. This, again, is another textured polished plaster, and we've done it in white so it ties in with other elements in the room, such as the plaster lights above the kitchen bar and the white leather bar stools. On either side of the chimney breast, we've got two huge oil paintings that we've commissioned for the artist. I love how they fill the space. Typically, on either side of a chimney breast, you might have some shelves that would be dressed. We've done that in lots of projects. But I really like here how it's much more simple, much more pared back, and just having the art and letting the space breathe. Opposite the sofa, we have these two custom armchairs, which have a bronze metal frame, and they're upholstered in a really rustic linen. And then in between, we've gone for this solid marble table, which again, really emphasizes those earthy tones and works so well with the other furnishings. For the rug, we've gone for a silky texture. Again, we wanted to add a bit more luxury. This is the main, most important room in the house. So this one has a very subtle ombre effect where it goes from darker taupe down to cream at this end. And the idea behind that was that it was almost echoing the effect that you get on a beach where the water's coming into the sand and it gets lighter and darker as it goes into the sea. Over this side of the room, we've got the dining area. And again, we've zoned that using the same style of rug, but a different separate rug for this area. So you know it's a completely distinct area. We've designed this custom dining table, which has a marble top, and I absolutely love it. It's such a luxury piece. And then it's got a solid metal base. And then we've combined that with, again, more custom furniture. These ones are upholstered in real leather. And I love these carved oak arms and legs. Such a nice contrast between the cold material of the marble against the warmth of the wood. The inspiration for the chandeliers came from these pieces of art behind me. Again, they're very much inspired by the beach and natural elements. They've got the same effect of that undulating wave and they feel very earthy. And we picked out the circular shape of those and brought that into the chandelier. And I love the interplay, how they work together. The chandelier is very understated and is purposely quite high so it doesn't block the view of the art. Views at home will not know the amount of precision that went into hanging all the sand. Oh, the drama behind the chandelier, this has been up, down, up, down, holes in the ceiling. Like, it's a miracle we're able to film this for you because even this morning there was electricians, decorators, we had to beg them to come at like 7 a.m. so that we could get this all done to share with you guys. And I'm so happy that we're able to do that. 
We've zoned the two areas of the kitchen away from the dining table using lighting rather than rugs. So obviously we've got the chandelier above the dining area and then above the breakfast bar we have these three pendants from Porta Romana. And they've got this beautiful plaster finish and it works so nicely with the plaster on the chimney breast. Taking that light ivory colour, almost off-white, we've brought this into the bar stools using some white leather, which isn't a typical choice. And our reason behind doing that was when you look behind the bar, it has a very soft taupe grey, and then the top is a much darker taupe, and you always want to have a contrast. If we chose another taupe leather, it would have looked quite insipid, and I like to have contrast between the materials so they stand out. So white was the obvious choice here. I hope you enjoyed looking around our Portugal project. I love showing you around. And if you'd like more regular content, you can also follow us on Instagram at Sophie Patterson Interiors and TikTok at Sophie Patterson Interiors. And we'll see you very soon.